Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video we're going to be talking about painting an engine. When we're going to paint an engine, there are several ways to paint it. Engine paint is preferred. If you have a place by you, like the paint spot, they can mix you a custom color in engine paint. You can add stuff to it to make it high, high temp. We'll talk about different kinds of paints. What do we go into the prep to painting? Here's an air cleaner. When we're going to go ahead and paint the engine, this particular customer brought other parts um, that have nothing to do with what we're doing in the engine build, but it does have to do with the engine in the car, like the air cleaner. It's a custom paint, so we want to go ahead and spray the air cleaner, and there's a, a couple of parts we're going to spray at the same time. We want to um, acid dip them. If you don't have acid dip at home, you can use a stripper that you get at Home Depot or Lowe's or anywhere and put it on there, get the, the, the paint to come off, then you want to prep it. I prefer glass beading everything with real glass beads uh, and have a perfectly clean part to begin with. And then we'll wash these parts down with acetone and hang them just before we paint them. When we get to the back of the shop, we'll talk about that. If you're going to do a custom color, Rick at the paint spot, call Rick, talk to Rick. There's a number, zoom in, um, put it on the link. Rick at the paint spot will mix you any color you want. If you can find it, send in the paint code and he'll make an engine paint to fit your car. If you have a, the, the color code of your car, he'll mix it up. The beauty of Rick and the paint spot is that he'll put it in an aerosol can. So this is for a flathead Ford we're doing. It's a burgundy, it's a, a, a custom color and Rick will put it in aerosol cans. He'll ship it out to you. It'll be in an aerosol can. You'll take your self-etching primer, shoot it, shoot it, and you're done. And you don't have to actually get a spray gun and or do anything right out of the can. And excellent paint. We've used this a lot. And that makes things a lot easier. If you're going to go to a color that's metallic, it's hard to do a real high metallic in a spray can. Um, so then we'll actually do is do it in actual paint. Rick takes care of everything. Uh, he'll even tell you how to mix it. He'll tell you this is one to one. It's, it's extremely simple when it's written right on there. What we want, this is the paint. This is the reducer for the paint. This is the clear. This is the primer. In this particular dark metallic blue, we'll go out there and we'll paint it. You'll see how beautiful it is. We're going to shoot it in a white epoxy primer. Um, the, the reason we're using white is this specific color will change if you use a different color primer underneath it. So this is actually going to get a white epoxy primer. And it's a one-to-one. -one. one part, one part. Really easy. It's, it's, you don't have to, to overthink it. Like I said, there it is on the top, one to one. How hard is that? We're going to make sure that the primer is mixed very well before adding the reducer in, in with it. It does settle. Once it's primed, we're going to let it cure an hour. Rick will, will walk you through this of how long you have in a window. If you wait too long, you have to wait 24 hours. You wait. He will uh, uh, let you know what you got to do to make it work. Then, what do we have here? We have our actual paint. So once this is done, it's primed. We're going to let it cure for an hour. We're going to make sure all the solvents come out of the primer. Then we're going to go in with the paint. This is a, a custom paint, and it has a high metallic blue. Rick did it by the color code. And then here's our reducer. This is two to one. So two parts paint to one part reducer. And he will sell you whatever size you need. You don't need to buy a gallon if you're only going to paint. You know, the pint will, will do it. Once that has painted and dried, then we're going to shoot a clear on the top of it. The reason being is this metallic will end up being a little on the dark side until you shoot clear on it. And the clear is also right on the bottle. Clear. Um, there's the hardener that goes with the clear, and it's a two to one. Very, very simple when you have someone that's holding your hand. And that is awesome. You can get an awesome job, especially with the help from Rick and the Paint Spot. Um, there's other paint places out there. This isn't a commercial for Rick the Paint Spot, but 
let me tell you something. Um, Rick will go out of the way, spend time with you. He wants to make sure that you know what you're doing and you have a good uh, outcome. If you end up with it with a bad outcome, you think it's the product and it's not the, the product. It's quality products and he wants to make sure that you're right. So much so that when you get a box from Rick, you're gonna have the filters that are necessary to screen your paint. You're gonna get cups. The cup's telling you how to mix the paint right there, two to one, right on the side, super simple. You're gonna get the stirring sticks. You're gonna get everything. You want it fresh and you wanna keep it sealed. When you're done, you're gonna to toss the stuff anyway. But there's going to be enough for you to do what you got to do. Rick is going to make sure there are probably going to be a few of these extra, a few of these extra, and a few extra cups. So you're going to get all of that. Everything that you need to paint this, I'm sure if you told him, send me paper, send me tape, he will send you everything. Uh, but if you have a local guy around you, use them. But I'm just telling you what we do here. And my paint jobs come out nice because Rick holds my hand. All right. That being said, let's get out to the shop. I'm just gonna show you that how to clean the block and how to spray it. And that's about it, all right. All right, we're in the back of the shop. It's a little loud because it's raining and you can hear the rain off the metal roof. Um, like I said, it's in the back of the shop where we can go ahead and spray. This is also a machine shop. So everything's really oily. If I can paint in this environment, you can paint at home without an issue. So, all right, we're gonna go and spray everything down with acetone. Another tip is you can also tell how long the paint's gonna need to dry or cure by how long it's taking to evaporate the acetone or the thinner. Um, it's real humid today, probably shouldn't be spraying, uh, but it will just take a little longer for it to cure. And like I said, a good example is how long did it take for it to dry off will give you a, uh, an insight on how long it'll take before coat. Okay, we're about to get ready. And remember, you're gonna get everything in the box that you need. There's gonna be some strainers. There's gonna be the mixing cups. There's gonna be some sticks. Everything's in there. We wanna keep it clean until we're ready to go. The mixing cup is awesome. If you're gonna go one-to-one, -one, just go to the one-to-one. -one, fill up one part here, one part there. You're done. Real easy cheese, it also has ounces on one side. If you just wanna go buy ounces, eight ounces, mix, pour, eight ounces, mix and pour. This way you can put them both in the same, in the same cup. Like I said, it does have the one to one. There's uh, one to 70%, two to one, three to one, four to one, so on and so forth. Real cool, you can get as complicated as you like or as simple as you like if you just wanna go buy the ounces. Rick has actually did it in-house, so I know how to use this chart now. Don't make fun of me, I'm, I'm an engine builder. Anyway, we got that, we got our mixing sticks. Rick gave me the heads up to make sure this was well shaken when, actually Rick even delivered this, so I won't say he'll deliver your stuff, but if you're a local, I bet he would. If you're gonna go, if you're gonna buy the products from him, he'll take the time to show you how to use it. So we wanna make sure, and a tip from Rick was to go ahead and stir it up before mixing. I have gloves on, have plenty of gloves, plenty of paper towels. I have my mask to spray with. All of the particulars, look at that. Beautiful white primer. Rick suggested that since it's so thick, it will settle at the bottom. And he said, go ahead and get it off the bottom. And let's do that. Stuck there. 
and it's gonna go one to one so let's get started there we are right there Now, we're going to go ahead and add our activator. Once this is added into it, tiny has started. Butamus. And we don't want to cover this real thick. It'll actually be a little translucent. It's a primer. So don't try to get it covered in one coat. You can always mix more if you need to. We'd rather have a couple of thin coats than one thick coat. I like to start at the bottom, and I'll even turn the crank to make sure I get the back of the crank fully really well. I'm going to it. Here. Look what happened there. A little bit of fish eye right there, and one other little spot right there. That's what's going to happen, especially if you use WD 40 on your parts. And I washed this three, four times, and that's what's going to happen. Fortunately, it's at the bottom, but I made a 911 call to Rick, and Rick says, Alcohol. Alcohol, wipe it, dry it, and spray over it, it should be gone. Alright, a little behind the scenes of what's going on. And may I suggest that if you don't have one of these this is my biggest fan, by the way. Actually, I have a bigger fan than this. Look at that bad dude. Don't look into the light. So if you're going to be painting at home, get you one of these fans. It's a bad dude. Look at that. All right. As you can hear, it's raining outside. 
But we are kicking this all over the place. And Rick was right. What was Rick about? The alcohol works perfectly. And don't forget to wear your mask. Put your mask on. And Rick was right about using the alcohol. That to turn out really nice. All right, here we are. We've let this dry overnight. If you remember yesterday, all of the little fish eyes that we had going on, we had some fish eyes there. We had some fish eyes going on there. We had some on the pan, and look at that. So Rick was right. A little bit of alcohol. On a rag, don't freak out. It's all you need. And it actually worked out really good. Didn't have to wait till it dried. I went ahead and just wiped it. And then we shot some more clear on top of it. So now we've let it cure overnight. See what these things are looking like. Look at there. So we're ready for some color. All right. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we have, peoples. We're gonna go two to one, using a cup. Talk to Rick and he'll give you the math. I know it's nothing special. It's two to one, so you're gonna put two parts here and then we're gonna go to the next two there. Um, being an engine builder, I had to have Rick um, show me how to use the special cup. What do we got in here? Hope everybody's having a good Friday. Oh. Ooh, can you see that? That's what the customer wanted. All right. So she picked all right, okay. Okay, all right. We want to mix this beautiful metallic. We're gonna go two to one and then we're gonna do a coat. Mm -hmm. Okay, and don't be afraid to ask questions. There's my notes. I call Rick up and just say, Rick, help. A good supplier will not be offended to answer questions. And the reason being is um, they want to make sure you have a good product and a good outcome. If you don't, you're going to blame the product. And yet it might not be RM's fault because you didn't know how to mix it. So that's how you'll know if you're dealing with the right people is are they offended at questions or do they appreciate that you're going to learn how to do this right. So anyway, a lot of paint shops will only sell to professionals so they don't want to answer questions. Rick sells to professionals and to amateurs and he loves what he does. So that's A-OK. -okay. To make sure we get that metallic mixed really well. The way you can tell is it'll start being one color as opposed to the swirl pattern. Swirl pattern I'm talking about is I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't want to lean it. Um, but you'll start to get all the metallics mixed really well. And it'll be one beautiful color. Let's do our two to one mix. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. That's just fine. There's one to one. Are two. And an old mask, you don't want to just throw them away and stuff. Use them to wipe stuff down. You know what I mean? We want to care about our environment.
Okay, it does come with the reducer, or Rick sent me the reducer, and we're going to go ahead and put in our two, there we are, to one, if you can see it, but there we are at our two to one. Turn the gun. Oh my god, beautiful. What you want to do is do it in light transparent coats. You don't want it's metallic and you don't want to hit it too heavy and have it runs or have the metallic get all freaky on you. So that's a light little transparent coat. We're gonna mix with some more paint and turn on the fan, get some air, and keep spraying. Alright, stay tuned. Alright, we're mixing some more, two to one, the same thing.
right? That's our pretty basically our first coat. And as you can tell it's a transparent coat. And I still have a little bit, didn't get quite enough right there. I'm gonna mix up some more. And then we have our still not quite a first coat on this side yet, but we are getting there. Alright. I like to turn it over several times and spray the backside. Um, in a metallic, in any, any paint, you don't want to do two thick of coats. This is really a light coat right now. Alrighty, Dan, and, I, and I'm sure I've mentioned, you know I'm an engine builder. I'm not a painter. I'm doing this over the hot tank. Rick would probably go crazy. You don't want oils around when you're painting, not if you want a good paint job. So it's if I can paint in this environment, trust me, you can paint anywhere. Um, I've painted under a tree before, so don't start laughing. All right, let's go ahead and mix up some more. We're still doing two to one on this fancy little cup. Not too bad. Use the strainer. It is a beautiful blue. <laughs> Let me see what uh, we have in the problem. I don't know if you can see this but it does help to have this gen fan fan right here and light because look at how transparent it is it looked really nice this is only the second coat 
and we still have some transparent spots in there. That's also why I rolled the engine over while I painted to get to all of the spots. Can, that, can you see it better there? With the light off, whoops. you can kind of see it, not really, when you're right here by it. I couldn't really tell. You almost can't, and you'll just kind of think it's done. Um, there it is. It really does look like it's got enough paint on it already. With metallic, you don't want to do thick coats or you ruin the metallic part of it. There you go. See that? You can see the, the difference in shade right there and right there. It's okay. It's only two light coats so far. We're going to shoot another coat. We are most definitely getting there, everybody. Looking good. That only has one coat so far. I think I did two light ones. Good. We're letting the fan do the work for us while we're mixing paint. Looking good. And for those of you thinking it's looking a little dull, yes it is. We will shoot a clear on top of this. All right, just mix some paint.
All right, let's mix our clear, which is two to one. Once again, two to one. And then we have a hardener that we're going to use. That's the one. Two of clear, one of hardener. There we are. Two to one, two, two to one, beautiful. All right, a little update, about to do my last coat of clear by Rick's instructions. Wait 20 to 30 minutes and then shoot another coat. So this is what it's looking like so far. It looks dang good, I'd almost leave it right there, but you know, you ask somebody advice, take their advice. Just take their advice, people. All right, let's get her done. One more coat of clear and we're done. All right, mix it some more clear. We've still got the same thing, two to one. Alright, how to paint like a pro, you get Rick to help you, tell you what to do, hold your hand, and you too can paint like a pro. Look at this. I don't know if the camera does this justice or not. I don't know if y'all can see that. This isn't out of a spray booth, this is right here in the back of the shop. Look at that. All right, that's it for the video. Thanks.
All right, so now you've seen how we've painted the block, how we prepped the block. We want to make sure we get all the WD-40 off the block. Um, we're using acetone on this particular engine, we're washing everything down, air drying it. We don't want to use a rag and wipe stuff down because you're going to have lint everywhere. You could use Scotch-Brite and prep all the parts with Scotch-Brite to take it to the next level of smooth and finished. I like to glass bead all my parts, but you've seen how we prep the block. We shot it in white and then we shot it in color. And then we shot some clear on, on top of it. Uh, all right, leave me a like and comment, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications. I do come on live stream. And if you hit the notifications, you will uh, be notified that I'm going live. Uh, this is it for me on this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. As for me, I'm getting back to work. Shout out to Rick from the Paint Spot. Man, he will help you shoot like a pro. Can you see that? With Rick's help, you will get quality work. I mean, I don't even know what to, where to start. Well, there you go. Thank you, Rick. Man, I don't know. How to thank you enough. Look at that. All right, that's it for the video. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm going to clean up, and I wish I was saying, as for me, I'm going home, but as for me, I'm cleaning this mess up. So, we'll see you on the next one.